What is up guys, Andy Forrest, the Dean Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the Saucony Ride 16. So very grateful to have the Ride 16 in for testing. I loved the Ride 15 last year, brilliant shoe, and I'm excited to share the updates into the Ride 16. Is it better, is it worse? You're gonna have to wait to find out. We'll get into all of that shortly. As with all first impressions videos, we'll go through how I tested it, I give you a quick technical overview and then get into those juicy details at the end. Very quickly before we do dive in, this is a pair of shoes that have been sent to me by Saucony for the purpose of review. However, they have no editorial control over this video. They will not, or they do not know my thoughts and they certainly will not see anything before you guys get to see it here on YouTube first. So with that out of the way, if you're excited for today's video guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends and of course, do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. Let's dive in to how I tested it. So nice and simple this one, just took it out for a 15 minute easy run, no strides or anything on the end, just had to fit this one in. And I'm quite grateful I did to be honest with you because the Ride 15 was a shoe that I used a lot for easy and moderate running. So I needed a zone one or a zone two uh, to test this thing on. And I'm gonna go through with you at the end why I feel that was the best test, um, just because of a few changes they have made to this shoe. So yeah, that was it, nice and easy, 15 minutes out there on the concrete and the trails. So we we'll kickstart the technical overview section by saying I went true to size in this shoe, size 13, UK, and it fitted perfectly. The usual thumb width at the end. Saucony, I never ever have any issues uh, with sizing. They're always a thumb width at the end, which is brilliant. Uh, it is a 35 millimeter to 27 millimeter stack height. So we're talking an eight millimeter heel to toe drop. In my UK size 13, it comes in at 322 grams or 11.4 ounces. And as always, we'll work away from the heel counter, talk about the ankle collar, tongue, lacing upper, midsole, and then move our attention to the outsole. So we've got a breathable mesh upper that runs all the way around the shoe, a fair few overlays, and we'll talk about those shortly. Uh, but start at the back here, we have some structure in the heel to give you a little bit of support, but a nice big scoop there that sits under the ankle bone nicely. And as you can see in and around the heel counter there, we've got some good cushioning uh, to give you a good, comfortable fit. Really, really nice, feels good and this whole area at the back here feels good. Tongue is medium plush, you know, not too puffy, but not too thin. It sits over the top nicely, doesn't come up too far, and it isn't too short. So again, like all Saucony shoes, I just feel like the fit of this thing uh, is brilliant. I, they just never let me down, to be honest with you. So it all feels really good. And that tongue is gusseted, meaning it's attached uh, left to right, as in the inside, there's a bit of elastic attaching it to the inside of the shoe. Overlay footage should show that. Lacing. Good, uh, I like this lacing. I've talked a lot in recent shoe reviews about stretchy laces, these are not those. There's a little bit of grit to them, which is good when you cinch them down, they feel good, they didn't lose tension, felt as good as it did from the start of the run to the end of the run. Standard lacing system there, as you can see, runs all the way up. One uh, eyelet loop here uh, using a bit of fabric, but other than that, normal all the way up. And then we've got that extra eyelet uh, at the top here uh, if you want to do the runner's knot. So again, all of that really nicely. We've got some overlays uh, around the back here and around here, but the front is very breathable, nice and lightweight, nice and... Uh, yeah, lots of ventilation, very much uh, like the Ride 15. So that is all perfect. Midsole, simple power run midsole, what I got used to in the Ride 15. It's kind of there, it's, I'd be wrong in saying it's not the lower end, but it's the, it's the it's the foam that they put in the basic model, so it's not the Power Run Plus, it's not the Power Run PB, it's not the Power Run HG, it's just simple Power Run, which works really well. 
delivers cushion and comfort, but at the same time is on the firmer end of the spectrum. So just bear that in mind. Uh, as I tested the Guide 16 earlier in the year, it's exactly the same uh, there as well. That runs full length. And as I said, you've got a good wedge of it in here, 35 millimeter stack height here, uh, 27 here. So a good wedge running all the way through. And then if we move our attention to the outsole, minimal outsole rubber coverage there, just in the high wearing areas. Uh, the rest of it there, as you can see, is exposed midsole. Never had any issues with that in the ride. 15 and it certainly didn't uh, unlike some shoe companies that have a lot of exposed midsole you often find that can kind of shed like snake skin and really wear away didn't have any of that with that shoe uh, and hopefully we won't have any of it with the ride 16 as well and that is it for the tech so first impressions, how did I find this shoe? How did I find the Ride 16 and how does it compare to the 15? Well, I had a great run in it. It felt really, really good. And as with all Saucony shoes, comfort and fit through the roof, just as a brand in general, they work so well for me. But I'm gonna say it, I'm a little bit disappointed. I really am, I'm, I'm gutted to say it, but I am a little bit disappointed in this update. Let me explain why. So I took it out for an easy run, felt great. It really enjoyed it and I weighed it before I went out. So I knew the weight that I put on the screen, I weighed the left and the right shoe. There was one gram in it, so that was fine. Um, I think it was 321 and 322 grams. And I was like, this feels different to the Ride 15 from what I can remember. I know it's been a while since I ran in it, but this doesn't feel quite as light and nimble as the 15. And lo and behold, when I go back to check my records that I keep, the Ride 15 was 300 grams flat. That's a 21, 22 gram increase, which is quite a lot. Now what I found with the Ride 15 and where it's the USP was, it doesn't do anything flashy. It's not anything particularly special. It's just a really good trainer to pick up the pace in. That 300 gram mark in the 15 puts it in the speed work category for me personally. That's where a lot of my speed work shoes fall. Um, never did speed work in it, but for a moderate zone two run, it was perfect. It flew, it was lovely. The foam breaks in after two or three runs. You know what you're gonna get. It is a bit firm on the first run, but as you get into the second and third run, it really does start to open up a bit and it feels really good. And the amount of stack height is perfect for zone two running. Got this one out, took it for an easy run and thought, I'm not sure how I feel taking this thing for a moderate run. And I will do at some point, I'll give it a test in a moderate run because I've been running in moderate shoes. Uh, shoes. I've been running in shoes in moderate runs that are like 350, 360 grams, uh, which I wouldn't normally do, but they've, been, they've excelled in it. But this thing felt a little bit... I'm not gonna use the word lifeless because I know that the first run in, in this shoe and with power run foam um, can feel a little bit sort of firmer and cumbersome. I know it opens up. I've had enough experience with the midsole to know that happens. But I did kind of feel like, oh man, this doesn't feel quite the same as it does. And as I said, 22 grams is a big old weight gain. So for me, what that does with this shoe is it now effectively drops it into an easy run category shoe and maybe tinker with a little bit of moderate zone two running. But overall, I'd feel comfortable just taking this out on easy day, uh, an easy day. And then what that leaves me with is a really lightweight and great package for easy day runs, lighter than a lot of my other easy day shoes. So it'd definitely be something I gravitate towards there. Um, but overall, I just feel like it's lost. Okay, what it's done is it's changed a little bit like the Speed 3 where the Speed 1 and 2 were very much edgy, great speed work shoes. The Speed 3, still good for speed work, but because of the updates it's had in it, a little bit more stable, a little bit wider platform, it's kind of notched it back a bit and brought it back to that slower pace. I feel like this has done the same again. They've just bought this back, they've pulled it in a bit. And for me and what I'm using in my shoes, this very much feels like, as I said, a zone one type of easy day shoe. Whether that's what it's marketed for, whether that's what it's designed for, I don't know. But I feel like even the Triumph at another 30 grams heavier will be a better moderate day running shoe uh, than this one, especially with the Power Run Plus midsole. So overall, I've got to say I enjoyed the ride. It was a great shoe as always. Um, I feel like the weight gain has come from a few of these overlays. We've got some kind of suede effect going on up around here. Uh, and again, I've got to mention it. This is a vegan shoe, a vegan style. So all the materials using it are vegan. I know I had a bit of a few funny comments on that on the Triumph video. Um, I'm just stating what they say on the website, but there are a few overlays, um, especially at the back here, which feel a little bit like with the Ride 15, it was such a lightweight upper and they've kind of got that in this top half. Uh, but when it kind of cuts up here and cuts up here at the back it feels like there's more shoe and I feel like that's where this shoe has gone it's, they've added a little bit more to it maybe even a little bit more cushioning I don't know that might be the same but I feel like it's the overlays and other bits and bobs that have put the weight up in this thing 
So yeah, overall, a great first run, can't complain, but definitely felt disappointed when I was out there because I thought to myself, ah, it's lost a little bit of its USP, it's lost a little bit of its... I said this in another shoot recently, je ne sais quoi. I really, really enjoyed the Ride 15. Um, I am going to enjoy this one, but I just feel maybe not as much. There are other Saucony shoes out there uh, at the moment, like the Triumph, that I probably gravitate over this one, the Speed 3, probably over this one, maybe. Um, so I'll try and slot this in for a few more easy runs, moderate runs, get some more miles in it, break in the power run foam, and we'll see where we go from there. So there we go, those are my thoughts on the Ride 16. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, have you had the 15 and the 16? Have you noticed the weight gain? Has it changed the way you use the shoe? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or have you picked up the 15 or the 16? Which one do you love? Let me know your thoughts, your total mileage in them how many miles you've got in them, let me know the wear and tear, all of that good stuff. That is so important for other people to read, especially the Ride 15, because I know that's on discount at the moment and a lot of people are picking that one up. Be great to hear how you've got on with these shoes. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you on the next one. Until then.